Praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm very excited for what God is going to do in this service. Oh, I love the Word of God. I love the people of God. Just really quickly, want to get out of your way. I want to give honor to my leadership staff. I give you honor. I want to give honor to my wonderful wife. Also, give her honor. Uh, she told me something in the spirit. You know, she likes to get into the Greek, and she was like, uh, the Greek for the word shield is, is what is it, Megan or Megan? And I was like, amen. The Lord done gave me a help and a shield. Thank you, Jesus. So very, very thankful for a woman like her in my life. Uh, while you're standing, if we would just turn to Acts chapter 24, verse 14. I just want to share a thought that the Lord laid on my heart. And it's about becoming the people of the way. So there was a lawyer, his name was Tertullus. And he brought Paul before the governor Felix with crazy accusations. And after the lawyer held his peace, the governor turns to Paul and says, Paul, now you speak. And in this courtroom drama, Paul rises up and he speaks and he says, But this I admit to you, according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets. You may be seated. So I just for a couple of brief moments want to speak to you about a group of people in the Bible, a people called the way. And I want to touch on a couple of areas. I want to touch on where they originated and what they are about and how to become them. So where they were originated, it was commonly thought to be quoted by Isaiah, but the gospel writer Mark, he actually quotes Malachi. And in Malachi chapter 3, he says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come into his temple. Now, I just want to stop here. It was the people in the Old Testament, and they were seeking the God of the Old Testament. And it was prophesied to them that a messenger would come before him and that the Lord himself would show up in the temple. Now, we know just by reading the Bible, if you read the man who showed up in the temple, that was who? That was Jesus Christ. And it says that that messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So we know, based on the unfolding of history, that the messenger who will prepare the way was none other than John the Baptist. Furthermore, we know that John the Baptist did not come to prepare a physical way in the sense of a street or a road, but he came to prepare a people that would follow Christ by preaching and baptizing in the wilderness. And he called these people the followers of the way. Now, the way was Old Testament language referring to a famous departure or a famous deliverance that we know to be the exodus. So we know the messenger, who is John the Baptist, coming talking about the way, he's really talking about a new exodus. And in, in, instead of Egypt, he's talking about a new exodus from Rome. And obviously, we know that this analogy is important because we see this new exodus come to pass in the book of Acts when God poured out his spirit. So talking about the people of the way, well, what were they, were, what were they about? The people of the way, they subverted the idolatries of empires. They had compassion on society's most vulnerable. They sought equality in community life. And they were people who served as the redemptive power of God. These people who were called followers of the way made such an impact that their critics called them public enemy number one because they stirred up so much dissension throughout the religious world. So the, the, the most important topic that I want to cover in becoming people of the way is, well, how do we become people of the way? Well, if you're going to become a person of the way, first, you must clearly see that to be a follower of the way, you have to be a matter of both belief and practice. You can't have one without the other. 
You see, too many people identify as Christian, but they don't realize that actually Christian was a negative term. It was a label to mock us. They were saying, oh, you're just a part of that Christ follower, that Christ fool. Christian meant that you identify with the teachings and the philosophies or that you were Christ adjacent or that you were a Christ sympathizer. But we need to be a people living our Christianity, not just in word and philosophy, but also in deed and in truth. To be a follower of the way was much higher than being called a Christian. To be a follower of the way, it meant that you understood the marriage between proper doctrine and action. You understood how to marry sound doctrine and effective action. Because if your doctrine is sound, then that means that your actions are effective. And conversely, if your actions are not effective, it means that your doctrine is not sound. Amen? The followers of the way understood the marriage between both doctrine and action. So what book do we have where we can see the marriage between doctrine and action? It's the book of Acts. A-C-T-S. It wasn't the book of conjecture. It wasn't the book of pontification. It wasn't the book of speculation. It wasn't the book where I can amen from my comfy little pew. It was the book of action. So I just want to close in a, in a couple of portions of scriptures. You know, Jesus, when he started his ministry, he turned to some of his who were going to become his disciples, his apostles, his followers. And he said, follow me. And the Bible says that straightway they forsook their nets and they followed him. And so if you find yourself struggling to forsake the right net, then maybe you don't understand the marriage between doctrine and action. If you care more about the temporal and the eternal, as we see in the, in the gospel about the man who wanted to go bury his father, then maybe you don't understand the marriage between proper doctrine and action. If you are holding your hand to the plow, as Jesus said, but you keep looking back, then again, maybe there's a disconnect between understanding the marriage between proper doctrine and action. So I want to close in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The thing that produces the mindset of action is power. And we know, according to the Bible, the sound doctrine is that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is the sound doctrine. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it gives you the power to go out and to bear fruit and to seek and save that which is lost and to preach the gospel to every creature and every living thing and to do the work of God. And that sound doctrine will take you from just being a Christian to becoming a true follower of the way. Be encouraged in Jesus' name.